Hi everyone. Today we will be talking about the differences between microfilaments, microtubules, and the intermediate filaments. Before we get to the differences, let's first talk about how these components are similar. I find that this helps to understand the differences better. The main similarity between microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments is that they are all components of the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a structure that helps the cell to maintain its shape. It provides mechanical support and keeps everything organized inside the cell. A variety of components work together to achieve these overarching functions. So, microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments work together to provide structure and order to the cells. As you will see later on, each will have their unique functions as well. All right, now let's get into the differences. Let's start talking about microfilaments. So microfilaments are also called actin filaments. This is because microfilaments are created when two actin filaments intertwine with each other. They have the smallest diameter of the three components we're discussing today. They are also solid polymers, meaning that they do not have a hollow inside like microtubules, as you will see later on. They're resistant to compression and fracture, so they have several functions related to the movement, contraction, intracellular transport, and cell division. Two of its main functions are muscle contraction and cytokinesis. During muscle contraction, actin and myosin interact with each other. They use ATP to generate force and create movement. This is what shortens the muscle fibers and therefore the muscles. During cytokinesis, microfilaments create a cleavage furrow, pinching the cell into two daughter cells, as you can see in the picture here. That covers microfilaments. Now let's go to microtubules. So microtubules are made of polymers of tubule and protein. Unlike microfilaments, microtubules make hollow structures like you see in the image here. The functions of microtubules are mostly related to movement. For example, microtubules provide a pathway for movement inside the cell. They are part of cilia and flagella, and they take part in cell division. Let's briefly look at each. Microtubules create pathways in the cell. These are similar to our roads, if you want a comparison. Motor proteins like kinesin and dynein use these pathways to move from one place to another inside the cell. If you want another comparison, the motor proteins are similar to our vehicles. Microtubules are also part of cilia and flagella. Just as a recap, cilia appear as projections of cells. They allow to move materials that are in contact with cells. As an example of this, you can think of the cells found in our respiratory tract that move their cilia in order to move mucus. Like cilia, flagella are projections of cells as well, but each cell only has one flagellum, and its goal is to move the cell itself. So the cell moves from one place to another through the movement of the flagella. However, in both, microtubules are arranged in the same way. This structure is called the 9 plus 2 structure. This is because there are nine pairs of microtubules forming an outer ring with two microtubules at the center, as you can see in the picture on the screen. This structure is unique to eukaryotic cells. Now let's talk about the third function of microtubules. Microtubules also make centrioles. You may have heard of centrioles when you learn about cell division. Centrioles are made of nine triplet microtubules arranged in a spherical manner. They are paired cylindrical organelles that are found near the nucleus. During mitosis, centrioles move to the opposite ends of the dividing cell and creates a mitotic spindle. 
They emit microtubules that span from each pole and attach to the chromosomes arranged at the center of the cell at a place called kinetochores. Once the microtubules attach to the kinetochores, they separate the two sister chromatids found in each chromosome. That ends our section on microtubules. Now let's finally go into intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments is a category that refers to a diverse group of filaments. Their roles are almost always structural rather than movement related. Some examples of intermediate filaments include keratin and desmin. Keratin is an important protein that makes hair, skin, and nails. The latter, desmin, is a muscle-specific protein. Intermediate filaments can withstand a large amount of tension and therefore are involved in many functions, such as the following. Cell-to-cell -cell adhesion anchors organelles, including the nucleus, within the cell and maintains the integrity of the cytoskeleton. These are the differences between microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. I found these images online and I found them useful. So maybe this will help you to understand the differences and similarities better. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please comment them down below. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. That really helps out. See you in the next video. Bye.